Welcome to Morning Message for October the 20th. There's a uh, light drizzle falling and it's uh, unseasonably warm for uh, uh, mid-October. It reminds me of one morning uh, when I was getting gas uh, for my vehicle. I was in Toronto, it was probably uh, 1986, 87, uh, somewhere along there. And um, I went inside to pay. I had a credit card. Uh, this was before um, debit cards. I mean, maybe there were debit cards, but I didn't have one. Um, anyway, I was paying, and the fellow looked at my card, and he looked at me, and he saw that my name was Clark, and he looked at me, and he looked at the card, and all that kind of stuff, and finally he asked me if I was related to the New Glasgow, Nova Scotia Clarks. Apparently there's a family of Clarks there. I think they own a gas station as well, uh, maybe a car place, a uh, car sales place, a uh, dealership. Um, I don't know. Uh, but in any event, uh, we had this conversation about the fact that I wasn't related to the new Glasgow Clarks, and I kind of had to explain to him which Clarks I was, as if to prove that I wasn't part of the new Glasgow uh, Clarks. Uh, same thing happens to me here in PEI. I have to explain to people that I'm not the Summerside Clarks, and I'm not a Magdalen Island Clark, or anything like that. Um, and it goes, kind of harkens back to that uh, uh, quintessential island question, who's your father? And uh, islanders think they're the only ones that ask it, but of course it's a common question in Cape Breton. It's really a common question all around uh, uh, the maritime provinces. Uh, people ask, who's your father? I suppose now the question ought to be, um, uh, who's in your bubble? <laughs> that might be a, a more uh, precise question about getting at who you really are, uh, who's inside your bubble. But anyway, I was thinking about that question, who's your father, and uh, how Jesus might have answered that question, uh, because as you know, there's at least two candidates uh, for, the, for the answer to that question of Jesus Christ, uh, who's your father. Um, I don't want to get into any great theological debate about this, uh, but this speaks to one of those uh, points uh, that, I, that I think is really important when it comes to interpreting Scripture, and that is figuring out why we're being told something uh, rather than whether or not it's true. Um, so Jesus could have said, uh, you know, God in heaven is my Father. He could have said, uh, uh, Joseph of Nazareth is my father. Uh, d you know, uh, the, the, both of those questions uh, would have been sufficient. But I think that the, um, the reason that we're being told this extraordinary thing about Jesus, because we're not told ordinary things about him necessarily. Uh, we're not told his height or his eye color or something like that, because uh, those things uh, perhaps didn't stand out. Uh, but we are told that uh, he had an extraordinary birth, and the reason for that extraordinary birth is because uh, he is, in a very real way, uh, the Son of God. And by that, uh, they mean an emissary, a representative uh, of God. Uh, God himself uh, is who Jesus Christ represents. Um, but Jesus also calls us brothers and sisters. He also says that everything uh, he does, uh, we can do, and more beside. Jesus is calling us into a special relationship with God. He's calling us into recognizing the fact that we are each, every one of us, uh, sons and daughters of God. And because of that, we have a special responsibility in this world towards one another and towards all of creation to be a people of uh, love and mercy, to be a people of forgiveness and justice. That's all I wanted to really remind ourselves of, uh, of uh, when, uh, when someone asks you, who's in your bubble? Uh, you can say, God is. God's in my bubble. God's in each and every one of our bubbles. God bless. Amen. <laughs>